Welcome everyone to the Saddle King County Continuum of Care Board regular meeting for October 4th, for October 4th 2023. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us today and uh, welcoming our board and staff. I'm going to have Alex uh, do a roll call. Okay, just saying, President, you are here. Are you able to hear me? Patricia Barnes Sam. Present. Sandra Bowden. Here. Kenyatta Carol Hillman. Lise Castro. Josh Floyd. Marvin Patron. Here. Antoinette Lambert. Here. Dorsal Plants. Ruby Romero. Here. Martha Sassarosi. Here. Christina Sawicki. Sherry Tillman. Galena White. Uh, present. With seven members present, we do have quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, as, all, as we do each and every time we gather, I'd uh, like to do a land acknowledgement before we get into the work. Tamara, you fill up to a land acknowledgement? Forgot to unmute. I do have a land acknowledgement that um, <clears throat> I'd like to read that I had written for uh, system performance committee meeting a couple months back. Um, so here we go. The land beneath our feet and the waters that surround us have always belonged to the Duwamish and Coast Salish peoples of the Pacific Northwest. I encourage everyone to reflect deeply on how these communities have blessed us with their generosity of spirit and how the land they steward have nourished our bodies, quenched our thirst, provided a bounty of natural resources, and ultimately how it serves as the foundation upon which we are able to meet our material needs for food and shelter. <clears throat> Similarly, the five domains of well-being, full frame initiative and the well-being blueprint offers the foundation upon which we can better meet the collective needs of our various communities. If we start with the understanding that we all are hardwired to pursue that which makes us well, then we will more likely see success in transforming the systems, governance structures, policies and programs that perpetuate inequities and contribute to the prevalence and incidence of homelessness throughout our region. The well-being framework and blueprint principles provide a roadmap for us to challenge the political systems and prevailing public perception of homelessness that continue to harm and criminalize our unhoused neighbors. It is this roadmap that I believe will shift the paradigm of our systems and uproot the cultural norms that have defined much of our homeless response system. But we first have to decide that we value human rights and well being over the political interests of our elected officials and NIMBYism. The problem of homelessness is structural, and therefore we need to educate policymakers and the public regarding the root causes of homelessness and offer community driven solutions that address those root causes through the leadership of folks with lived experience. In doing so, we must also engage in activities that challenge the social and cultural norms that value profit over people quantity over quality, and complacency over innovation. In summary, we must insist on systems transformation and policy decisions that uplift humanity's universal drive for well-being. If we can do that, then we will see more holistic, healing-centered models of care across our systems, as well as meaningful support for our unhoused neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. I would clap. 
I actually I am. <laughs> well given. Okay. Um, as we uh, are moving on to the meeting, I did want to take this time at the beginning to welcome Lacey Morgan. Uh, she is joining us from the Youth Action Board and taking their representational seat on the board. Uh, Lacey, do you want to share a few words? Hi, yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Lacey from the YAB. Yeah, my pronouns are she and her, um, and I'm just glad to be here. Um, yeah, obviously, Youth Action Board, and I do have my two kids home today, so um, a little bit of a distraction, but I'm going to focus as best as I can. <laughs> Welcome. All righty. Um, next up is, did everyone get a copy of the minutes, have a chance to review the minutes? Are there any edits or changes necessary before we accept them? No. That's a motion to the Thank you, Galena. I have a motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? A second. A second. Thanks, Tamara. All righty. Can I do a voice vote? I can do a voice vote on the minutes, right? Yep, I do have to do a vote. Oh. Okay. You want to run the roll? Um, okay. So do you approve the minutes or don't approve the say either? I'd like to call your name. Patricia Barnes-Sam? Accept. Thank you. Tamara Bauman? Accept. Kenyatta Carol Hillman? Lise Castro? John Doc Lloyd? Accept. Marvin Patrell. Yes, sir. Antoinette Lambert. Except. Uh, dorsal plants. Ruby Romero. Except. Martha Sassarosi. Except. Christina Sullivan. Christina Salaki. Sherry Tillman. Delina White. Accept. Eight members approved. Motions passed. All right. Moving right along to public comment. Uh, as our recent history has, we have done as a board is this time is for public comment. But if folks, if you do have questions or if there is comment after a particular agenda item, please uh, let us know or place your questions in the chat so that we may have an opportunity to bring in. Uh, your questions. So at this time, I will open public comment. Owen is out sick today and is not able oh. to give the point in time. Uh, Owen, you are discussion. So we are going to likely hold a special meeting so that um, the public and the board is able to hear the update on that. Uh, for now, um, is Alex Ibrahimi on the call? Yes. I am, yes. Uh, Alex Ibrahimi is going to give us an update on quarterly and entry. Oh, after public comment. After public comment. There we go. So uh, who sees the, do we have anyone for public comment? There currently are no hands raised. 
um, nor are there any questions in the chat, but I'll keep my eye on it. Thank you. All righty. Um, move right. Uh, we do have a hand remain. raised. OK. Yeah. I uh, can't see who has a hand raised. It's Michelle Eastman. A question. Michelle okay. Eastman. <laughs> Hi, a uh, question. So if uh, the item, the agenda item on um, uh, the point in time count is not happening today, uh, does that mean public comment cannot be made on that item? You may make public comment on that item. Okay, thank it's, you for it's that. It's on the agenda we are not presenting today, but we will have another special meeting. So you could either share your comment now or that come share it at our the special meeting or both. okay uh well i guess i will go ahead and make my comment if i may so um i would like to talk about the point in time count and encourage the kcrha to create a standing uh coc point in time count committee in accordance with the hud recommendations and additionally, I would ask that HUD ensure or HUD KCRHA ensure that lived experience remain part or be part of the development of the PIT, have more involvement in the PIT. Now, so that we actually sorry. Sorry, I'm hearing a lot of background while I'm trying to speak. <laughs> Give us one second. Okay. Okay. I think we've, you can please continue. Okay. Um, so going back to the point uh, to, we're hoping that uh, the PIT um, in, to ensure lived experience is a part of developing the PIT count and that it, for the purpose of making sure that fewer people are missed and that uh, people in rural areas are included as well as uh, making sure that an equity lens has been applied. And then in the future also or for the PIT count, ensuring that any algorithm that is developed considers an equity lens. And also that for the uh, algorithm that is used uh, to develop the number of people experiencing homelessness, that it become, that is given upfront and is uh, clearly explained before put it, being put into use. So that is the request. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other hands? No, I don't see any. All righty, uh, we're going to move along with the agenda. Um, this uh, next portion is for the board. I was thinking if we keep uh, a special meeting on a Wednesday at that time, still works for uh, folks. Uh, same start time, two o'clock, but only schedule out for an hour, uh, two weeks out. Uh, I will, Jaja or I will flow an email with Alex to get that on everyone's calendar. Uh, if I, if no one has any immediate objections. Okay. Uh, moving on to coordinated entry. I do believe we have Alex Ibrahini on the line. Alex, can you join us? Absolutely. Uh, Good afternoon, board members. My name is Alex Ibrahimi. My pronouns are he and him. I'm the system performance manager at the RHA, and I will be giving you another update on coordinated entry. Uh, for those of you that were in attendance last month, 
we gave a couple of updates related to um, both uh, a community feedback conversation that occurred in September and some updates to coordinated entry processes. I'm going to uh, go over some of those more recent updates. So you may be hearing things that you heard uh, last month, but I will also include a couple of things that are, have happened in, since the last time we spoke. Um, for any of the board members that uh, want to have a conversation uh, about coordinated entry more broadly and require uh, that type of orientation, please uh, reach out to um, Alex Piffner uh, to schedule something with me. I'm happy to, to go over that context so that way you have that uh, information when you are here uh, representing the community. Any questions before I start? All right. I don't I'm see any. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to try to present my presentation and can y'all tell me if you see it? Yes. Said yes? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so so I'm going to go over briefly some of the, the, the foundational stuff with coordinated entry. Uh, coordinated entry, in summary, is the system that uh, is designed to connect people experiencing homelessness to housing, particularly with the, with the referral component of the COC response. So matching people in need, individuals or families, with the resources that are funded specifically to serve them as they exit their housing crisis. Uh, eligibility is uh, particularly focused in on folks that are uh, staying in a shelter or sleeping outside of a shelter in a place that's commonly known as a place not, for, not meant for human habitation. That could be a tent or a vehicle or a place that doesn't have utilities. Uh, additionally, uh, folks that are survivors fleeing or attempting to flee. And then for young people, there's certain uh, criteria related to them that are at imminent risk of losing their housing placement. Um, briefly, the colleagues on the team are outlined on the slide, and the slide will be available uh, uh, for Alex Fickner again and staff to be able to share out. I want to bring your attention to the top right corner. We have a new staff member who started today. Uh, Leah Sima uh, Fahori uh, started with our team as coordinator. Uh, we are grateful to Olivia Heidos, who has been on the team for about five years now. Uh, and she is transitioning out of her role. Uh, and we, we wish her uh, the best and, and, and all the gratitude in the world. Uh, but we have a new staff member starting and has started today. Uh, again, uh, just to go over briefly the decision making and, and uh, responsibilities uh, that the continuing hold for coordinated entry. Uh, the COC lead, as you all are well aware, is the RHA. The system performance team, which is the team that I am fortunate enough to help support, is the team that operationalizes coordinated entry at the administrative or macro level. And the community impact team uh, is the team that uh, provides evaluation and data analysis for the coordinated entry system. And finally, you all have a role as the COC board for oversight for the CES, the coordinated entry system locally. And then um, usually a coordinated entry is drawn out into several different uh, uh, components. And the first being access, uh, you know, I'll remind you all that there's regional access points throughout the county. And there are uh, hundreds of uh, community-based assessors is what, what they're known as that have uh, uh, HMIS access and can provide coordinated entry enrollments in HMIS for folks that they're serving as a part of their, their regular work. And, and, and those community-based assessors are scattered throughout uh, direct service providers in our continuum. And then the, uh, the, the nomination process is, uh, is uh, uh, situated throughout the day for windows of opportunity to be able to match people experiencing homelessness to housing. We also have optional, and we really want to emphasize that, optional meetings that folks can attend to drop in and have any questions answered that they may have. Uh, but these, these windows for nominations uh, are provided on a daily basis. We send out resources on a daily basis. We match to housing on a daily basis. Uh, we are we are um, using the learnings from and, and and as Marvin is well aware, the Housing Command Center that 24-hour cadence of responsiveness and that that's really what has informed this process. Um, the coordinated entry enrollment, which is HUD mandated for everyone's awareness, uh, uses the minimum uh, uh, data points and questions that are required as part of a coordinated entry system. There's questions related to uh, uh, history of homelessness. I apologize, there is some construction happening nearby. History of, of, of homelessness, uh, disability status, uh, uh, income, cash, and non-cash benefits. 
And finally, some questions related to pregnancy status and the type of household that the, that the household is, if they're a family or an individual experiencing homelessness. And then the other, uh, the other spaces that we help to support are the American Indian Alaska Native Case Conferencing Space. Uh, our colleague, Karina Jordan Hernandez, uh, helps to support that work. True Blood Case Conferencing, which is a specific funding stream. Again, Karina is the leader in that space. Veteran Case Conferencing, which is uh, in partnership with the King County Veterans Program, Washington Department of Veterans Affairs, and, uh, and the, the VA. Again, Karina is our leader in that space. And then finally, in efforts to prevent people from exiting into homelessness again, we have a mobility transfer process and policy in place to be able to, to pass folks uh, to resources that more suit their needs as we uh, learn uh, uh, new, new, new information about the situation. Uh, finally, referrals, which are, of course, a key component of coordinated entry. There are three criteria that I, I outline uh, consistently for everyone's situational awareness when it comes to an effective housing referral. Uh, primarily or uh, first would be eligibility. Is the individual or, or family eligible for the resource? And that's funder-driven eligibility. Uh, it, it preference, uh, does the family or the individual want the resource? And then finally, service match, which is are we using the, the minimum uh, housing resource that is uh, necessary to stabilize someone so that way we're not saturating people with resources they don't need and we are also being good stewards of the resource and we're not underserving them based off of what, what we know that they, they, are, they are saying that they need. Uh, finally, um, bringing us to the, the updates that I mentioned earlier, we are looking for um, uh, we have switched our process for nominations uh, that have broadened access uh, to the continuum. And then there are efforts underway, which I will update you shortly, about ensuring that there's a higher quality of referrals going to our provider partners. Uh, first, uh, just to remind you all, uh, we have uh, had success with the Emergency Housing Voucher Program and the process of what was known as reverse matching, meaning providers that are serving folks in the community were nominating those households to the resources that were available. It proved successful in that context. And besides that, it also provided a resource that was um, a middle ground between some of the lower, lower level support versus some of the higher level support in our continuum. And then what we have done uh, this summer is we have expanded the pathways to be able to nominate folks into housing for providers in the community that are serving people experiencing homelessness. Uh, they have spent time developing rapport, getting to know folks, and being able to uh, volunteer to support them through the navigation process. And again, uh, just to address some of the concerns that I heard uh, last meeting, this is really about uh, someone who's navigating and, and essentially demystifying some of the interlocking or in the case of certain, certain systems, non-interlocking uh, uh, intersections where, where different things kind of join. And there have, uh, there have been things that are um, not necessarily intuitive uh, to be able to um, successfully be housed. And some examples are housing applications, um, eligibility criteria, documentation, those types of things. And the the other stuff that we are working on is, um, and I'm going to skip past this, this slide because we talked about it last time, is um, chronic homelessness verification is one of these things that is, if you all have uh, familiarized yourself with it, as I know you have, and for those folks that may be watching, uh, it is something that is um, a rather uh, complicated uh, documentation process and, and eligibility criteria. We see an opportunity to provide the technical assistance and education uh, for our colleagues in the field that are doing this type of work. So that way they are uh, able to more effectively document chronic homelessness. Again, I wanna bring this continuum uh, board's attention to the um, valley of resources, resource type uh, that are uh, available currently. We have uh, opportunities with lighter touch things such as diversion and rapid rehousing, and we have permanent supportive housing, but folks that do not require a, a deep level of, of support, but require a durable subsidy, there is a significant scarcity, uh, and I refer to it as a bit of a value when you're looking at a graph. Um, the other piece is there is uh, an opportunity to provide technical assistance for our providers in the field related to, um, at a higher level, HUD project types, and at a local level, how those project types map to the housing resources available in our continuum. And this is something that we talked about last month, but what we are building out 
is a battery of training and we are, we are uh, presently working on this curriculum to be able to have um, monthly onboarding trainings for coordinated entry, entry. So beyond the, how do you interface with the coordinated entry system as a provider, but how, uh, how, how um, the resources that are available in our continuum, how those uh, uh, are, um, uh, are uh, mapped out and how those um, are relevant to the work that you're doing as you're trying to house people. And then, uh, as I mentioned last month as well, we're working uh, to document qualitative information related to the outcomes for unsuccessful referrals. And those unsuccessful, unsuccessful referrals can happen for a variety of reasons. Uh, sometimes those are uh, person-driven. The, 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 the family of the individual has declined the resource post-referral. Sometimes they're provider-driven. Uh, there's a there's a, a mismatch or a, a, a denial that that um, is coming from the provider side, and we really want to be able to provide that qualitative information for review for future evaluations. And as I mentioned, the desire uh, to be able to provide monthly onboarding trainings, really system orientations for the folks that are new to the space. And then um, again, the bodies of work that we're currently working on, or the projects that we're currently working that are that are improvement. It's the mobility request uh, homelessness waiver. That's something that we have uh, been uh, working with our uh, head technical assistants uh, to be able to update uh, the prioritization process for those of you that were in attendance last month at this at this uh, at this committee uh, or the community um, conversation that occurred on the fifteenth. We have uh, solicited uh, input from the community both in that meeting and via uh, uh, a a input form. For uh, prioritization, uh, to remind you all, we're we're looking at a short-term uh, strategy for prioritization. Now that uh, COVID prioritization access has has ended, and a in a longer-term uh, prioritization model that would take longer, uh, obviously, to be able to develop. And then um, one thing that we continue to work with partners at, at a at a very um, program program level uh, is to be able to develop a process by which we can send multiple referrals to one resource, but to do so cautiously in a way that is uh, trauma-informed and doesn't uh, limit access to other housing resources. And that's still something that's ongoing. Uh, it is something that, that we take very seriously, and I don't expect to have um, a deliverable on that for some time. And then uh, the regional access points uh, uh, option, thinking about how, from a person-centered approach, our whole system has uh, tailored to consider the experience of people uh, that are trying to access resources through the through the system that we operate, um, making sure that our design and our regional access points and everything that is that is connected to coordinated entry is uh, thoughtfully implemented. And that is again that is a longer term project that that we will not have a quick update for you all on. And uh, finally, um, the the integration of shelter placements and coordinated entry. That's a mid to long term uh, uh, um, uh, project, and I don't expect to have any updates for you all uh, that are significant this quarter. But wanting to bring your attention to them, that those are bodies of work that we're managing. And then, um, as a reminder for prioritization, we solicited that input from the 15th until the 1st. Uh, that's informing our planning for, for, for short-term prioritization strategy, which will then be brought to our coordinated entry committee board. The coordinated entry committee is uh, being, um, uh, uh, first meeting will be on the 26th of October of this month. We currently have uh, an a, a, um, application form that's available on the coordinated entry website. Uh, for those of you that are interested, uh, we encourage you all to apply. Uh, that uh, application uh, uh, form is available up until uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, thereafter, we're going to collaborate with the, this, this members of this board, members of this committee, to be able to identify that uh, membership for the coordinated entry committee. And then we will be uh, providing orientation and uh, decision opportunity for their first meeting around prioritization. Um, and then I will, I know that the text URLs are not great in this forum. These links are currently on our webpage uh, un, under the KCRHJ uh, website. I can um, have it linked in the chat for you all later. Uh, and uh, as a reminder, if you submitted your application for the for the coordination committee previously, you do not have to resubmit it. And then that brings us to the end of the slide deck. Thank you, Alex. Um, any questions?
Well, I'll start off with the questions. Um, everyone who would like to participate with the coordinated entry committee has to go through the application process. Does that also include folks who want to do work from the board? That is my understanding for okay. chair, but I, I could be mistaken. I just want to make sure we got everyone to the right space. So, um, within the presentation, the one technical term I did not understand uh, was side doors. It said improving or increasing side doors. What are side doors within the, the C yeah. coordinated entry process? <laughs> The 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 uh, the external fills uh, have which have ended as of uh, May I believe it was the 26th of this year. Those represented a type of side door, and by side door, essentially a circumvention of the coordinated entry system as a whole. And so, making sure that all resources through our continuum, as per HUD directive, are being filled through coordinated entry. Did that did answer your question? Hmm? It did. I just didn't know what the term was. <laughs> Others? Any other questions? Any hands? So I'm not always like very quick on the uptake. These are options for us to participate at the COC board members. <laughs> Correct. You can participate with the coordinated entry committee. Okay, going over like, this work. I would like to do that. Can someone send me whatever I need to fill out or please? This is Christina, me too. Can I get that too? This is Lacey. <laughs> this, is, yes. this is Sherry. This is Sherry too. Go ahead, Sherry. Yeah, I, no, I, said, say, I said me too. I was going to say. So that I have Sherry, Jaja, Galena. Right. I was going to say if you have access to the chat, Christina. The in the chat. Christina. <laughs> Antoinette. I put the link to the application for um for the CE committee in the chat. Um, and if you um need it afterwards, we can also get that sent out in email too. There is a hand um in the public space. Um, so I will uh, invite that person to speak. Thank you. I can only see a name. Hello, my name is Yasmin Wahid. Um, I wanted to say that I'm very interested in joining that as well. Um, so I just heard you said you put it in the chat. So I would like to join the committee as well. Do you so not see the look. application in the chat, Yasmin? I see it now, but my hand was already raised before she had mentioned that. So I had tried to write something in the chat and it wouldn't let me. So I just wanted to vocalize that I would like to be included in that as well. Thank you. Any other questions? This is Jaja. I have my hand raised. I just want to say uh, to uh, Alex, thank you so much for that presentation. It was absolutely fabulous. I um, wonder how effective the program has been. You know what I mean? And how how do you feel the program is? How effective? Jimmy. Sorry, go ahead, Jaja. I just wanted to know how. Is it doing what it needs to be doing? Do you see ways that it could be done better? And I'm sure if you're on the committee, you can we can suss this stuff out. But just from your personal perspective, I was wondering what you think about. Because I'm kind of conflicted on the coordinated entry thing and um, the whole rapid rehousing uh, and not, really sure how effective it is and, and th as a tool. What do you think, Alec? Because I really value your opinion. I appreciate that. And and um, just for background, uh, I, I 
before before working at a systems level on core data entry, because I've been working on core data entry for seven and a half years, I did direct service for 10 years. Um, half of that approximately was as a case manager, primarily trying to get people into housing. Um, I am a bit big advocate for the 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 concept of a core data entry system. And the reason being is uh, what what had existed prior in my experience is something that was highly dependent on the lack of a better term, the luck of the draw about what providers you happen to connect with or cross paths with, how long they had been doing the work, how many connections, networks that they had built out as a process of that labor, and how uh, oriented they were to new opportunities, which were not necessarily put in front of their field of awareness as part of their 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 everyday job. Um, that that uh, that is not a system. And and I also want to bring to attention that locally coordinated entry is something that is moving towards a system wide implementation. I think the the term program is not something I've 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 not heard before. That is a common way of framing the core data entry program. But you know, if you're taking it from the HUD standpoint, it is CES, a core data entry system. And it has to be a one-to-one -one for for the all the all the 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 entry points that someone experiences homelessness connects with the resources in the continuum, all the way to housing placement. It has to be a one for one. Um, I, along with others on the team, both on the team currently and having left the team have struggled uh, to improve it over those seven and a half years. Uh, that And there are opportunities to improve it. There's always one thing that I've enjoyed about this particular challenge is there's always opportunities to improve it, no matter what. And with that being said, the primary constraint that we all experience something that is either directly tied to it or related to it is the scarcity of housing. That scarcity of housing drives the efficacy of coordinated entry Everything, every every sticking point of corded entry is connected to scarcity of housing, and um, I think this is this is one thing where there there's always an effort to improve it, and there's always an effort to 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 work on equity and and efficacy and efficiency. And that being said, the fact that we have spent so much time on some of these components really speaks to the to to that we have we we don't have other options. We don't. We we are we don't have enough resources, and I and I apologize for being repetitive, but but I cannot be I cannot overemphasize the severe scarcity, and I know you all know this, but for those that maybe are less familiar, watching this after the fact and and wondering why does core data entry not house everybody in the consumer? It isn't because the mechanisms aren't there. It isn't because providers in our community aren't willing to and and ready to help house people. It isn't because of, of of bad design. It is because of lack of resource to be able to house folks, and uh, that is one thing that I think that if you know if if there's attention put to to this board, it is the the extreme scarcity and even along certain project types and and who they are intended to serve. There's scarcity within scarcity, and, and um, I, I I don't bring this to excuse anything. I know that there's an always an opportunity to iterate and improve, and it's been an honor to be able to be part of that work for these seven and a half years. Uh, and truthfully, it, uh, you know, I've used this analogy before, and though it is it is imperfect, uh, the fact that you know core data entry seems to be a focus of a lot of uh, 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 attention, uh, I think misses the, the 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 true. The true driver of the challenge, akin to if you were to focus in on improving a car but not filling the tank with gas, ultimately it's going to still be in that space and not be able to move folks forward. You need to be able to resource it. Thank you. That's more clear. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are there any other hands? Any other questions? But I would like to thank Alex for uh, joining us today and getting us some awareness. Uh, I want to remind everybody, please, uh, the application link is in the chat. Uh, everyone who had mentioned, uh, 
it's a good number uh, for working with the committee. Uh, let's fill out the applications and we will get that one moving forward. Can't wait to hear uh, next month well, what's been going on. All righty. Thank Moving you. on, uh, I did get a request in the chat from one of the one of our board members. I will create space uh, after our, our next series of updates, and uh, I'll be calling on you shortly, Ruby. So, and Marvin, uh, yes. Marvin, I did um, put in the chat. Can you all please send me the application via? Um, my email, I'm interested. I just can't access it through the chat. Today's meeting. Okay. okay. Kelsey? Oh, thanks, Marvin. Hello, everyone. Um, I am going to do a bit of an overview of the NOFO, which was submitted, was it only last week? <laughs> um, on the 28th. On the 28th. We actually sent it uh, on the 27th uh, at the end of the day. So very excited that it was in. Let me pull up this so I can play from the beginning. Awesome. So just want to do kind of a, a brief overview of, of the NOFO. Um, time for just folks, if you have any final kind of questions or things that you want to um, bring up for us to be thinking about um, in 2024. Uh, should the NOFO not go to biannual? <laughs> Fingers crossed that maybe one day it will be every other year. Um, so, uh, main overview on the NOFO, kind of the, the money that we were renewing and asking for a new funding, um, our total amount that we are allowed to renew from HUD, which is the estimated ARD or annual renewal demand was $56.6 .6 million. Um, that was how much we had in all of our renewing projects. We had to tier this year. So we had to put um, projects in tier one, which is kind of the guaranteed renewed dollars. And we had to put some money in tier two, which is uh, part of the competition dollars. So in tier one were 93% of our money. So $52.6 million. Um, we had COC bonus this year that was just under $4 million. We had DB bonus money that was 1.5 million. And then we had COC planning that was increased this year to 1.5 million. In total, we had 55 projects that were renewed. Um, two landed in tier two. Um, one straddled between tier one and tier two. Um, and this year we also had the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program or YHDP awards were competitively renewed. So that means that they were rated and ranked. Um, in subsequent years, they were, or in previous years, they were not rated um, as they were not competitive, they did not have to be competitively renewed. Um, this was new for any round one um, uh, COCs who got YHDP awards and we were awarded in the first round of YHDP in 2016. So those were competitively renewed this year. Um, we also applied for six new projects um, from all of the bonus dollars as well as some reallocated dollars. We had two programs who voluntarily relinquished funds. Um, one fully relinquished their program uh, and another uh, relinquished partial funding. So that brought us a little over $2 million in additional funding for new projects um, from the, the $3.9 million of the DB bonus, or of the COC bonus, pardon me. Um, this led to eight new projects from reallocation and or COC bonus dollars. 
And then we have one DV bonus project that has three subrecipients. Um, this is a rapid rehousing program for domestic violence. Um, we had three organizations apply to do rapid rehousing. Uh, and in order to kind of strengthen that application, we, we put them all under one in a single application. Uh, so that is off to HUD. Uh, and we will hopefully hear about the competition results sometime in Q1 of 2024. Uh, last year, we heard in late March, um, uh, I think it was a, a few days into my maternity leave that I saw that the NOFO competition was announced. Um, so hopefully we'll hear before mid-March, um, but we, we will keep our fingers and toes crossed that we heard here early in quarter one. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, a little bit about the planning grant. Um, so the COC planning grant was increased from 1.25 million to 1.5 million. Um, we added from that additional $250,000 into the budget um, dollars to support board work, in particular the COC convenings for 2024. Um, we also requested to add a COC program specialist for further capacity for COC work um, in terms of grant oversight and management, um, COC compliance work that has to be done um, by KCRJ as the COC lead. Um, so we're hoping to just, you know, further support and expand um, our ability to really do this work um, well. Uh, so we will, again, get some of that information and results when the NOFO uh, results are published in 2024. Um, a little bit about the consolidated, app consolidated application. So this was informed by a number of people. Uh, we had a KCRHA staff, COC board members, YAB board, mem board, board members, um, staff from the Coalition of Ending Gender-Based Violence. We had 13 raiders and rankers who really all helped inform the content of the consolidated application. Um, and I want to give a really big thank you to Tully McKay Tisbert, who was our contracted grant writer this year, who did a lot of the lifts on the technical writing of the consolidated application. Um, without him in the support, it it would have been a lot more. Um, and it, it would not have gotten done in the way that it got done. So we just want to give a, a really big thank you to Tully. Um, the application was posted and announced to broad stakeholder groups um, on September 26th, and it was opened for public comment um, through midday on the 27th, uh, and we submitted it later in the day on September 27th. Uh, I see your hand, Marvin. I'm going to get through the rest of the slides, and then I'll have a um, question uh, moment. Um, I do want to add in um, a little bit of the public comments uh, summary. We opened it up for public comment and asked folks to, to send us their feedback, um, and just wanted to share that here. Um, around just notice, notice of the the questions in the application around speaking about criminalization of homelessness as well as participation of those with lived experience um, that um, I we as KCRJ cannot take credit for those being included. Um, those were questions that HUD has included in the application um, and just want to give a lot of thanks to the COC NOFO work group, as well as those with lived experience who helped inform the responses to those questions, um, largely members of the, the NOFO work group, as well as members from the YAB. Um, it was really you all who informed those responses. Um, so just again, want to extend gratitude to this community for um, bringing your voices and making sure that they were a, a, a part of the um, consolidated application narrative. Um, and I just want to end with some thank yous to um, different groups and folks. Um, first of all, the COC NOFO work group. Um, this was a work group that met from January of 23 through early September of 23 to talk about 
what we wanted to see um, in the NOFO and in content um, and how to go about it in the year. Um, and just wanna extend gratitude to, to that group, um, particularly for carrying this work forward while I was out um, and just really appreciate all of the effort um, and the consistency that that group had. Um, we will be sending out a scope of work and application information for a 2024 work group before the end of the year um, that will be open to board members, to COC members, um, to participate in our planning and preparation for 2024. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to our procurement team for the hard work that they all did on the bonus dollars. Um, just my deepest, deepest gratitude to Jen Ozawa, who was our policy and procurement manager. Um, without her, uh, I would not have been able to help support the NOFO the last two years. So just deeply, deeply grateful for um, the work that, that Jen helps carry um, and model as well. Um, and then again, another huge thank you to Tully, uh, who was our contracted grant writer this year. Um, it just allowed for um, a lot more kind of thought and attention on our product applications and our new product applications um, to put forth kind of the, the strongest programs that we can for new, new options to work on housing folks in our community. Um, and yeah, just very much uh, a, a large team effort uh, in terms of getting the, the NOFO completed and in. That's my overview. And I really then just want to open it up to folks who have comments, questions, um, and things that, you know, we want to, to highlight for the next go round. Can I go, can I shoot a question now? Yes. I please. took my hand down. <laughs> um, the COC planning uh, dollars to 1.5. Do uh, I noticed that uh, we said expand? So uh, we in, we enjoyed having a continuum of care coordinator, and I think we would still enjoy a continuum of care coordinator along with a specialist. Is that Is that still? Is that the way that looks? That's the hope. Yes, we can't guarantee a specialist until we hear about NOFO. Yes, right. but yeah. I, I am actively working on hiring for COC coordinator. That is still a role that is, is here, just it's unfilled currently. Uh, and is how is the board represented in that hiring process? I oh. have just pivoted to start hiring from coming out of the NOFO sand hole okay. I've been in. Um, so I will, I will keep you all attuned as we go through that. Um, I've just started looking at, at um, folks who've been applying. Yeah, so I don't have a full answer for you quite yet, but give me like four days. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are there other questions, comments for the NOFO? I see Alan's hand. Uh, Alan has his hand up. Alan Gutierrez. Hi, everybody. I, Alan Gutierrez, he, him, his, uh, incoming Deputy Chief Program Officer. Thank you all so much for being here, both board members and uh, all of the attendees. Um, I just wanted to echo Kelsey's thanks to all of the members of the COC board, the Youth Advisory Board, who we are so delighted are now. Um, part of the full board, as well as to all of you who helped to support the annual COC competition. It is such a Herculean effort and um, it's it's always just like so exciting when we, when we get to click submit. Um, and in addition, I um, also wanted to just give Kelsey a shout out as well for all of your hard work as well. I think you thanked 
you think to everybody but yourself because because you're you and um, you your contributions were huge um, as were the contributions of all of you and so thank you all so much again you'll be the first to know when we hear about the the results of the competition and generally we expect to hear in the first few months of 2020 of the following year but likely sometime around like march ish if we're lucky so we will i would i would estimate we won't hear until maybe march 2024 but we never really know and hud doesn't really give us a give us a sense of when it's coming um so we're all just We'll just be waiting and we will definitely share the news and the details and the outcomes as soon as possible. And thank you again. Thank you, uh, Patricia. Quickly, thank you, um, forgot, for that last comment. I wanted to add in regards to the NOFO, I helped with the rate, rating part. And I was, I'm still kind of like in awe or wondering what happened after that, because I know I was in a training and I was hoping that someone from the work group or are we on pause to know like the next steps, the process of the applications, because I was hoping to receive some feedback from the work group on the rating that I did and et that's, cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's so a great I'm not question, sure. Patricia. Thank you. So I would encourage you to reach out to our procurement team. So Shawnee Jones, Joe Bechtold, and Eli Griffin, um, they may be great ones to give you some, some if you want personal feedback on that. Um, that's something that we want to do in, in this space is that's um, kind of a one-on-one -on -one conversation for you to have. Um, okay. What happened after we got all of the information from the raters is we had two meetings with the rate, all the raters who were available. Those Thank who you. weren't, we asked them to bring um, any particular um, questions or comments they had about the applications they were reviewing. Um, and we held two sessions, um, one on Monday and one on Tuesday of the I want to say the it was the 11th and 12th of September um, to go through all of the applications, all of the rating scores um, to review the ranking process. So that's when we made those decisions that we discussed um, in the community meeting that we held on the 13th. We talked about how things were rated and ranked, um, and that was done in those two sessions on the 11th and 12th. Yeah, thanks, Kelsey, for that. Oh, that's what I was asking for a little in your presentation, a little overview. Thank you. And I did reach out. I haven't heard anything back. Maybe offline, I will um, reach out again. And maybe whoever's online can reach out to me. Yep. And respond yeah, to the email. Thank you. Yeah. I know some folks took a little PTO after getting the notebook Thank done. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Got you. Okay. Patricia, I'll just confirm to you that um, I, I just dropped Eli, I directly messaged you Eli, Joe, and Shawnee's um, email addresses, and um, I will ask the team, I do supervise the three, uh, that dream team, Eli, Joe, and Shawnee, I'll make sure that we follow up with you to give you that feedback, and thank you so much for inviting that. Awesome. Alrighty, um, my follow-up will be real quick now, since we have Kelsey and Alon both on. Uh, in uh, prior submissions of the NOFO, the NOFO planning work group did meet once or twice following the submission to go over, you know, what we got from this process and how we can do better the next year. It looks like we may be able to hand off participation on the work group uh, with the process for bringing new folks on so that they can take part of the, this experience. So is that still on, Kelsey? 
Yep, yeah, my hope is still to have a debrief, um, likely in later October or November, uh, give my brain a little bit of a NOFO break for a minute uh, and focus on some other work that I've uh, I've I've got I've, I've got to do as well. Um, yes, but that will definitely not go by the wayside. Um, have have all intents and we'll definitely make sure that a debrief is completed. Um, and last year, one thing that I did um, after the NOFO was submitted was go back through the consolidated application um, and do just a debrief of the whole application. Um, and I plan to also do that this year to have an idea of, you know, where, what areas did we feel really good and strong about? What areas um, do we want to think about better strategies or ideas? Um, so want to be able to, to do that same kind of thought process um, for, mm -hmm. for this year's application also. Kind of a, a bit of like a self-reflection, um, but on the consolidated application itself. Okay, thank you. Look forward to it. Uh, are there any more questions or any more comments or then I want to thank Kelsey for that uh, good recap and glad we got it in and we look forward to the next steps. So uh, up next, uh, if Alon will be patient enough to allow me to swap an agenda item, um, I'd like to go to system performance committee updates. Tam? <clears throat> yeah, Janelle, so. I, 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 Janelle, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Janelle is actually not in today, so um, it'll just be me. And uh, so right now we're, we're kind of focusing on getting uh, a new co-chair. Um, and so I think the, the process will be voted on or the, the nominations will be voted on the next public meeting um, and getting to know the new, uh, oh gosh, the new person who's supporting the, the data, oh my gosh, the system performance, no, the community impact team. Oh my gosh, my, my brain, my brain is, okay, community impact team. <laughs> So we're working on, uh, um, you know, we'll be talking about the pit, you know, coming up and um, getting to know the new staff person in, in the community impact team. So it's a lot of, it's been mostly, at least this time around, just talking about the transition. Um, and so there will be more to come. And I think there's, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it for now, because um, we just had our, uh, planning meeting this morning and it was is really just about talking about new co-chair membership and um and preparing for the pit oh that's that's it well we want to hear all about that preparing for the pit so <laughs> glad we already in the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't we don't have we didn't really get much further in other than like we're going to be talking about like the methodology or proposed methodology um at the next meeting. So if anybody wants to know more, I would strongly suggest that you come to the public system performance committee meeting, I think two weeks from today at the same time, two to four. Would you all be discussing that at your planning meeting for that meeting? That's on the agenda, yeah. Okay, so uh, that might be a good space for the newer folks to actually Possibly engage. I was trying to make sure we send we send out uh, righty. I'll, I'll I'll remind you I wrote it down. So uh, up next uh, are Alon. Do you have any KCRHA updates, other updates? And if, uh, and I do believe that you and my co-chair Jaja are going to give us a convening update. Thank you, Alon Gutierrez. He, him, his deputy chief program officer at the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. 
The main update that I wanted to share with all of you today is um, that we are hiring. Um, there are a number of openings available. Um, I will just share my screen if I can. Uh, on the KCRHA website, I'll just drop this link for I will get that link into the chat, um, but just wanted to go through that um, we are hiring a youth and young adult um, policy coordinator. Uh, oops, there we go. Can you see the website? Yes, okay. Youth and young adult policy coordinator. Just want to make a note, I will supervise this person, so um, I uh, love the work of supervising teams and leading alongside folks. So uh, please apply. I'm looking to hire somebody for this position very, very soon. Similarly, for our procurement and policy manager, most of you all know Jen Azawa, who Kelsey acknowledged earlier, recently transitioned out of the RHA, and I will be supervising um, this position. And so please do apply. Um, we have our COC coordinator position that was recently vacated by Eli because he transitioned over to the procurement team. So he will actually report to the incoming procurement and policy manager. We also have program coordinator and program specialist positions available on our team. Um, as I am arriving at the King County Regional Homelessness Authority, one of my primary missions is in staffing up um, to ensure that our teams have work-life balance. And so we're not like juggling so much work that folks experience um, burnout. Um, I am as just my leadership style is one where I really, really focus on supporting our teams and just making sure that folks, um, you know, are being supported with prioritizing their work. Um, so, um, and I know you all are getting to know me, and so it's going to take time for me to build trust with all of you. Uh, but I just want to encourage you all to um, spread the word about these available opportunities. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. So as often in the past, uh, if there are ways, and I think I can get some today, uh, printing out a couple of the applications lets us uh, get paper copies out into communities that might not have steady or uh, direct tech <laughs> support where they are. And are any of the jobs remote? Um, <clears throat> thank you for that question. Um, the new job postings, we recently updated our job postings. I'll share my screen again. Remember to click share. I think I'm sharing. Yes. Um, our new um, positions um, include the amount of time that they're in, in office um, so that it's clear for folks the percentage of time that they would be uh, working in the office. So to answer your question, yes, it is, it is clear um, as to okay. the percentage of the position that that's remote versus um, telecommute. All right. Are there other questions? Any other, yeah, any other questions about job postings? That concludes my KCRHA updates, but happy to pause for any questions. Alon, do you think you could put that in the chat, the link to that webpage so that people can pull up those applications if they'd like to? Yes. Or job description, sorry. All right, well, it looks like there's no 
other questions? I don't see any. Thank you. And the next spot on the agenda is for you and Jaja. Uh, what do we know about our upcoming convening? The second one for 2023. Thank you, Alon Gutierrez, he, him, his deputy chief program officer at the KCRHA. Um, thanks for bearing with me, uh, introing myself. My, my style with COC board meetings and public meetings is to always introduce myself before I uh, speak on uh, any given topic. Um, uh, and uh, Zha Zha and I, um, uh, are happy to give a, a high level update today. Um, Jaja, are you there? My name is Jaja Floyd, and I'm right here with Alan. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, um, transparently, Jaja and I have um, been rather busy in the last month, and so we have not um, had the opportunity to make um, uh, uh, much movement on the next steps for the COC convening. Now that the COC competition has concluded, um, Zha, Zha and I are going to be meeting this week and um, to uh, convene that uh, COC convening work group, uh, which will be really focused on planning the upcoming COC convening. With that, um, because it is a work group, we do not need to have an application process for folks to join the work group. And um, folks can um, reach out to Zha, Zha and I to express interest. If you would like to help with planning the convening, we would love your support. You could more than welcome to email us um, and let, let us know that you're interested in supporting and we'll drop um, our emails in the chat. Um, Jaja, do you want to add anything else? Yes, Dad, I look forward to seeing all those who are enthusiastic to help us with the convening. Looking forward to hearing from you. And I am putting my email in the chat. Thank you, Jaja. Hi, this I, is Patricia. Hi, Patricia. The board, she, her. Can Alan or Jaja, can you give a quick overview of what you mean by the convening, COC convening? What is that term? And what is what will we be planning if we want to get on the work group? I'm happy to take it and let if you um but if you want to respond, Jaja, you're most welcome to go. Go ahead, Allah, please. Um, thank you for your question through the chair. The COC convening is a requirement from the US Department of Housing and Urban Development for the continuum of care to have a minimum of two convenings with members of the continuum of care on an annual basis with the goal of bringing together this inclusive body of members who have chosen to lean into the work of uh, reducing and ending homelessness through participation in the continuum of care. The COC convenings are really an opportunity to come together to provide training and onboarding as to what a, CO, a continuum of care does. There are oftentimes um, decisions and actions that are decided during those convenings. Um, and it's an opportunity, I think, centrally to bring together people with lived experience, people who work at nonprofits that are implementing components of a given homeless response system, um, 
and you know all the different stakeholders who are involved within a continuum of care to really come together build trust and relationships and build upon all the work that um, we do um, that sort of ties back to um, a given continuum of cares five-year plan. Was Thank that helpful, question. Patricia? Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alon. Are there any other questions? All righty. Yes. Oh, this we is Martha. Having... I've got a Martha? question. Yeah, Martha has a hand up. Yes. I just wanted to um, be confirm, like, shared understanding of timeline so none of us are caught by surprise because I. My understanding is like our next meeting, I think will be Monday, or sorry, Wednesday. We're always gonna Wednesday. Wednesday is November 1st. Wednesday, November 1st. And I think at one point a date had been thrown out for like early November for this convening. And I don't know if there is is if there's a tentative date um, being held currently, but just checking that like for the COC advisory committee as a whole, um, the there's nothing for us to be voting on or discussing. Just, it seems like it'll be a tight timeline, you know, and so really empowering that work group to, to create the agenda, everything that will kind of go into that event. And we will more so kind of, you know, hopefully hear an, an update or preview maybe come November 1st or in uh, email communications in the interim. But then, yeah, we're really empowering the work group to move that forward given the tight, tight timeline before the end of the year. And, the holiday season through the chair thank you uh member sasarasi i concur and as uh Zsa Zsa and i get into more of the weeds of um forming the coc convening work group next steps it may be that we end up needing to push the date out a bit um we will obviously be very aware of the holidays and like, you know, timing, uh, but we want to definitely make sure that we provide enough notice to the community so that they're able to attend um, and to be there. And so that the COC convening work group can really fully participate in um, the agenda setting, visioning and planning and implementation of the next um, COC convening. We look forward to having, um, and we will uh, provide that email and just sort of communication with all the members of the COC, including the board um, and the YAB. Um, thank you. As always, I'm going to ask, did that answer your question, Mark? Yes. All righty. And I want to push, I'm going to push that you can't. There's not much time to push back. If the target date is early December, uh, there's, that is the target date. We are now at the last of the year. Sorry to always drop the work, but uh, it would be the first time we've actually held two convenings in one year. This will be our third attempt. So let's try to make sure we get it right. Put whatever you need to a side and let's knock this one out. <laughs> Let me know how I can help. Is there anything else for uh, this topic? Alrighty, I want to give an opportunity. Uh, Ruben Romero, one of our board members, uh, wants to uh, give us an update. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to her. Hi, thank you so much, Chair, for giving me the opportunity to speak today and providing space for this pretty important issue. Um, I also want to thank the board members today for being here and pushing for change and for the KCRHA staff for being here and providing updates on these important issues. Um, however, I wanted to bring to the table today, after doing a little bit of research on what we can and cannot say uh, with, with the help of KCRHA staff, I wanted to, to kind of give an update to the public and to our other board members about uh, an issue I find with the, the uh, homelessness debates that are supposed to be happening next week. Uh, Put on by uh, like one of our 
one of our, we are in, I guess it's like a public thing that's happening. So anyway, long story short, um, they're having the this homeless specific debate for council candidates and their incumbents as well. And uh, it's for districts two, three, four, six, seven, and then King County District eight. And so that leaves out one and five, which are very, um, neat, like very important areas. Um, and so I'm just kind of curious as to like what we can do to maybe get those uh, districts involved because they, sh you know, like District One is South Park, it's Soto, which has the highest, uh, you know, unsheltered uh, people living experiencing homelessness that are living unsheltered, and we also have Pioneer Square and <laughs> South Park, large areas. District Five is Northern, uh, Northern Seattle with Aurora Avenue and. Uh, Bitter Lake, where there was that encampment on the school property. So these are very important um, areas, and it, it concerns me that they're not being included. When I did a little bit of investigating, uh, they they just kind of said it was due to funding. So I'm just curious as to what we can do to provide enough information to all of the districts in Seattle when it comes to this very like large, you know, very complex, nuanced issue. I, I'm just curious as to. What we can do, yeah, I need. We need to employ all of our districts, and uh, those are major areas. And so, I just kind of wanted to bring that to light. I'm not really sure where we can go from here, um, but I would like to see some sort of uh, representation there for District One and District Five equally, as they are providing a space for two, three, four, six, seven, and then King County District Eight. So, thank you, guys. Thank you. So if uh, anyone else, uh, I would love, I'd love to take a look at this uh, with you. I'd like to know more about how they funded a debate that excluded two of the eight districts. Uh, something there does not sound right. If they decline to be part of the debates, that's one thing, but I am sure we can, yeah, sort through. And we can definitely do that and we don't, yeah. And we cool. come back. So, thank you. Yeah, they're going to be happening next week, and I just want to advocate for, you know, that factor. It seems a little strange that uh, they left them out. You know, so I appreciate the uh, concern there. Welcome. Sorry. Sorry, we were just trying to get the link to the. Um, the job descriptions in the chat, but it seems like we're having some technical difficulties. So I will send that out in the email. Um, if you also are looking, it is on the King County Regional Homelessness website. Um, wait, yes. Sorry about that. Well, thank you for the update. Oh, and it does. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Oh, sorry. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Tamara. <laughs> um, I just wanted to uh, also, uh, I forgot to mention during the system performance committee update uh, that the next session, we're also going to be talking about um, how, what we can do like within the, the, the confines of our ILA, what we can do to partner or engage in activities that stop sweeping people that yes. stop criminalizing people. We, I want to be able to, for us to do that. I know it's a political, politically charged um, issue, but I really want us to not back down and, and for us to continue pushing and prodding and like annoying our public officials. I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, I don't know any other way to say it, but but like they need to listen to us because they're not listening to all their constituents. They're listening to businesses. They're listening to the NIMBYs who have been super loud and w much better organized than we have been. I, I, I really feel strongly about that um, and think that we have an opportunity to collectively organize and, um, and push back, you know, and hopefully not uh, violate any bylaws or anything, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to encourage people to come to the next meeting so that you can share your, your thoughts. And then the following meeting, we're actually gonna be talking strategy. So 
that's an FYI for you all. Thank you, Chair. And I'm always waiting for our continuing the care to tell our board what they would like us to share with our elective governing committee. <laughs> I'm happy to carry off messages. <laughs> If it's okay, can I speak again to what Tamara said? I can lift that up really quick and then we can like be done for the day. So uh, one thing that I think we could definitely do to live, lift up the lived experience voices is uh, a friend of mine who does a lot of work in outreach, got a bunch of letters from people that have been experiencing the sweeps uh, being done to them and, and, it, and it captures a lot of their, their harm that's been brought to this community. And I think that it does amplify the, the serious issue that it imposes on individuals just trying to live. Um, so I'm curious, you know, uh, if you wanted to bring it to council meetings and stuff and read them, but I feel like maybe we could utilize them in our community as well. So uh, that could just bring some awareness as if you guys are have any ideas on that, I'd love to hear feedback. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Sounds good. Is there anything else for the good of the order today? I wanna thank everyone for their time today. Uh, thanks staff for coming. The one um, and for the pre yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I do have uh, something real quickly I wanna bring up. I know we didn't do the point in time count um, <clears throat> and that will go out in two weeks. Now. But I do wanna bring up that I feel like it's very important that we create a stand as the COC um, on the point in time count, uh, a, a committee, a count committee in accordance with the HUD recommendations so that we can uh, be fully engaged as lived experience in that work. And I, I, I just wanted to bring that up and put it on the record. Thank you. That's a good thing to have on the record. Um, motion to end the meeting. We have a motion to close today's meeting. Do I have I a second? second? I second that. Thank you. Uh, once again, thank you everyone for coming today. I'll call this meeting closed. It is 3.32 on Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. Everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.